Hi everybody, welcome to Precision Machine Shed. Today we're here with Gordy Linnell, owner-operator of Northern Rifle Accurizing uh, Gunsmith Shop. Uh, today he allowed us to come in here and kind of check out his shop and talk a little bit about what they do and uh, look at some of his machines and see what's going on here. So, Gordy, thanks for helping me out here and uh, uh, glad to help. Yeah, why don't you tell tell the people what kind of what you guys do here? <clears throat> Well, basically, we build custom rifles, and we do all sorts of accurizing on factory rifles. Uh, what we can do, we can take uh, somebody's factory rifle and put on a new barrel. Uh, when we do that, we, we blueprint the entire action and the barrel to make sure everything is concentric with the center line of the bore. We go through, square the uh, internal lugs, uh, go through the... The threads, uh, clean those all up and redo those if we need to. The uh, recut the face of the receiver mm -hmm. and we install lugs on the receivers, the ones that doesn't have a uh, recoil lug built into it. We'll put a precision ground lug on there and then we will put on a match grade stainless steel barrel um, and then. <clears throat> If a person wants a complete custom rifle, then we do have actions on hand sure. where we can uh, uh, take up an action and uh, uh, we go through those also and blueprint those and mm -hmm. make sure everything is perfectly trued up on a lot of your, your factory actions. <clears throat> And then we'll build a rifle complete uh, action barrel. Uh, we have stocks on hand, uh, so we can uh, we can build a, a rifle complete for you. Uh, scope it up, work up loads for it, uh, uh, set it up as a long range hunting rifle. Uh, uh, we do <clears throat> basically anything with sporting rifles. We build a lot of thousand yard match guns, we build a lot of uh, vintage military rifles, M1, Springfields, uh, Craig's, uh, uh, and then we also we do a lot of repairs on firearms of all sorts, shotguns, rifles, handguns. If it goes bang, we can build it or work on it. And yeah. we, uh, we build our own AR rifles and uh, and a little bit of everything, I guess. Yeah, so it's a basically a full service gun shop, and then and then you guys got a few specialties, like you said, the thousand yard like F class rifles, target rifles, military rifles, ARs, um, and sporting rifles, long range hunting rifles, stuff like that. So you guys do a little bit of everything, so it's kind of cool to to <clears throat> be able to. This is actually the shop that I I worked for you for what about three years yeah, or so. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. So so I was lucky enough to come in here and uh, and. Uh, uh, this is actually the second gunsmith I was able to work with, so I, I was able to learn quite a few things from Gordy here, and uh, I sure do appreciate having the privilege to have been able to do that. So, um, so cool. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to just go take a look at some of your machines you got here, and uh, okay. uh, I see you got a few barrels chucked up here and there, and we're going to go see what you got going on here. So let's take a look. All right, so this is one of your... This is, you've had this lathe for quite a few years now, I know, because I, I worked on this machine when I was helping you out. And this is a Jet 13x40 um, with a D14 spindle on it. And I don't know, when I used it, it seemed like a pretty good lathe to me. What do you, what's your take on it? Yeah, it's a, it's a, good, uh, it's a good lathe. It uh, does a, a good job for us. It's, uh, uh, it's not a real heavy-duty lathe, but for gunsmithing, uh, you don't use... Uh, uh, a real heavy duty, uh, you don't need a real heavy duty machine. Uh, most of our cuts are on, uh, uh, are fairly, fairly light compared to a lot of things. So uh, you, you don't want to start doing a lot of heavy cuts with any, uh, anything in gunsmithing. So it has worked out real good for us. Yeah, and, and the nice thing about this machine, you can do metric and English threads on it. And then, uh, and then you put a Mitutoyo digital readout on this guy, so you don't have to struggle with the, all the anal analog numbers, right? Right, that's really, <clears throat> uh, really nice. Uh, you don't have to be uh, looking at all them little bitty numbers and 
and and try and keep track of your all your rotations and everything. I had Michitoya uh, make that uh, digital readout for this lathe and our mill, and and so we've got exactly the same readouts on both, so you don't have to re think what you're doing when you go from the lathe to the mill. Yeah. And this, I noticed a few other things you put on this machine. You put an outboard spindle on it for dialing in barrels. Uh, I know that's kind of essential when you're doing gun work. Uh, you can do it through the tail stock, but it seems to be so much easier and a little more accurate. Well, of course it's more accurate to do it through the head stock. Uh, and then you got a digital readout on your tail stock, which I remember using that thing quite a bit, and that's, that's handy when you're doing chamber work, I know that. So yeah, it's a nice little machine. I, uh, I'm trying to think any downside to it other than it, you know, like I said, it being a little lightweight, but it still probably weighs about a couple, 1,800, 2,000 pounds, I'm sure. Weight in that, uh, that neighborhood. I know, I know they're not light. <laughs> so. One of the, one of the nice things we use on this one is a three jaw <laughs> chuck. We made, uh, we make our own soft jaws for that and then we put them on and we center bore uh, the soft jaws uh, for a lot of the work, uh, you don't have to be messing around with uh, dialing in your four jaw chuck. You can put her in a in this three jaw. The jaws are already bored, and you can put them in there and, and go right away. Yep, and that that's of course after you've done all the threading and everything. So, what you're clamping on, your jaws end up being concentric, and then what you're clamping on with the barrel ends up being perfectly concentric. So theoretically, everything should be concentric there. So yeah, that's cool. All right, so here's the latest and greatest edition. It's actually, what, about two or three years now you guys have had this thing? Yeah, been here about two or three years. So what this is, is this a, a newer uh, South Bend 13 by 30, uh, sold by Grizzly, because they bought out South Bend here a few years back. Um, and this thing, like the other lathe, is set up. It's got, did they come with a spider on the spindle, or did you guys put one no, on? that one, uh, Mike made that one okay. up. And then I see he's got a plate over there for the tail stock for dialing in. Uh, you can put an indicator on the tail stock and Dorian tool post. Some nice, nice tooling on this guy. Um, what do you think about this lathe? I mean, a lot of guys see these things and, and they're relatively new yet. So, what's your take on it? It's a it's a terrific, uh, terrific lathe. It's uh, it's very uh, massive, the heavy duty. Uh, it's a very rigid uh, machine. It's. Uh, it's a 30 inch uh, machine which is, is plenty long for any type of firearms type work mm -hmm. that we do. We, we do a lot of our barrel work with 30 inch barrels and it's plenty long for that right. because most of the stuff we do is, is through, the, uh, through the headstock. Right, right and then you know it's not, not too often anymore you end up profiling barrels because that's kind of, I mean it's almost cheaper to buy them profiled than it is to take the time to to do that so right right yep yeah. and then uh so that's it's... yeah that's one of the reasons you need a longer longer bed but yeah you really like this like i said running through the headstock you really don't need it but um yeah what else it's got everything on it that you would need it's very uh very accurate very very rigid uh, uh we use this one for a lot of our <laughs> thousand yard match rifles where where we have to have everything exactly, uh, uh, exactly perfect. Yeah. I guess that's the name of the game. Ultimate precision is you know hit the X every time, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you want uh, all X's, and uh, when you start shooting a uh, thousand yards, you've got to make sure everything is completely uh, perfect uh, with your barrel, and your action, and uh, and the shooter. Yeah. Well, cool. I, I guess some of the things I noticed on this lathe is <clears throat> it's got a nice deep chip pan in it, and I think that pulls out, doesn't it? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So that pulls out so you can empty it out. That's kind of nice. And then uh, it's got the foot brake on it, which is really nice because I know sometimes I've wanted to stop a lathe quick, and, and uh, it's handy when you need it. So yeah, that's a cool machine. All right, so here is <clears throat> your main mill. Uh, this is a a jet. It's a 836. I think it's a JBM 836. Uh, it's a smaller size lathe, so it's not quite the size like a Bridgeport Series One or Series Two, but it's actually a, a really nice size. I think it's a really nice size machine for doing like gunsmith work because uh, it doesn't take up a ton of floor space, and uh, yet it's still 
uh, heavy enough and, and solid enough to, to do some good milling on it. Uh, so uh, what's your opinion on this, this guy? Yes, this has been a real good mill for us. Uh, like I say, it's not as massive and big as a lot of them, but for gunsmithing, you don't need anything really big because most of the time we're, we're cutting dovetails and drilling and tapping and such as that and uh, uh, using a fly cutter for squaring up things. Uh, and uh, we make a lot of our soft jaws uh, on here for the, uh, for the lays. Uh, it, uh, it's been a, a very good machine. It's uh, got all the, the, the movement that we need. And also, I, uh, I've got a Michitoya uh, digital readout on this one, and I had uh, this one here is the same as what we have on the lathe, so that way you don't have to rethink anything when you go from one to the other. You can, you can just reach up here and zero out, and, and away you go, uh, and, and get set up, uh, and then you zero your, your uh, digital and uh, then you just go by the numbers and uh, it's been an excellent machine for us. Yeah, I know, uh, I was just talking before we started here, I, when I was working here too, I used this thing quite a bit too and I was pretty impressed with it for, uh, you know, like a, basically a mid-sized machine. It's pretty rigid and if any of you guys remember my little rust knock mini mill, you know, I've done quite a bit with that thing and this thing is like five times the size of that thing. So, um, so yeah, I, I think this thing's a neat little mill and uh, I've just this is the only one I've ever seen in person so <laughs> but uh, and I didn't realize it was a it was a little bit smaller version than like the Bridgeport series one until I actually got a Bridgeport so um, but yeah this is a I think this is a nice little machine especially for what you're doing here and the the digital readouts are just make life so much easier especially it speeds things up and it, it's more accurate and it just it makes life easier then we also built uh, built this for a two for doing stock work. Uh, we can we can set up a stock in here and use the mill for uh, inletting stocks too, oh, sure. which a lot of gunsmiths don't do, but it can do a lot of that kind of work too. Yeah, I saw that on there, and I was going to ask you about it. And that, yeah, it's, that makes yeah, life we made a lot this easier. made this up special so that we can put a stock in here and and. We we stabilize the the butt stock in, and then we can we go with uh, whatever size tooling we need to uh, cut the uh, the size of the action and uh, drill the holes for the action screws and uh, do any kind of milling on the bottom side too. Yeah, because when you're doing like F class stocks, um, you know you want high precision. You're doing six hundred thousand yards, whatever you're doing, and yeah, it's just so much easier to do accuracy accuracy type work on. On a mill like this, where you can dial everything in and get, you know, get your, uh, like you said, your screw holes exactly where you want them, and you can inlet on them and get your barrel channel perfectly straight. So it's, you know, it cuts down on time too quite a bit, doesn't it? Right. It it makes uh, life a lot easier than trying to do all that stuff by yep. hand, and you can do it. It's such a precision uh, thing. You can, when you got specific spacing of your screws, you can just dial it in up yep. here and and move your to the numbers you need and, and do your drilling and uh, it's it's done right. Yeah, and it makes for a lot cleaner looking work too because you don't have as many mistakes and and you know if you're inletting by hand sometimes you can if you're using like a like a rotary tool or something you can sometimes miss you know we don't do that but <laughs> some people you know can miss and so this kind of eliminates some of those issues so it just makes a lot cleaner nicer more accurate work. All right, so we're going through the shop here, and I saw he's got a little new addition here, and you got a little stand for doing AR work. So tell me a little bit about your stand first. Well, this works out really handy. It's just something I put together out of uh, some <clears throat> old scrap stock. The uh, this is a semi brake drum, and then a, a coulter disc welded on top of that, and then a, a piece of good heavy uh, pipe, and then a, a chunk of three eighths flat stock on the top of that. The nice thing about this is that you can walk all the way around. You're, you're not confined to just a bench, and we use this for um, mainly it, it's for our AR type work. So you can you can put a put an action in here and work on it, or a lot of times we use it for other applications too. If you uh, if you need. Yeah. Cool.
All right, here's another neat little tool that he made up, kind of the same principle of what I just showed you, but he's got his four grinders on there for doing uh, wire wheel buffing and grinding. It's kind of a nice economical way to set up your grinders. He's got four of them on here, so and it's pretty, the floor is a little uneven, but it's pretty sturdy setup. And I'm, I know I've used these grinders quite a bit when I worked here, so it's, it's a nice little setup. All right, so here's this little machine. He's got tucked way back in the corner, and pretty much all they use this little guy for is doing overall length case gauges. Every time they uh, do a custom rifle, they usually make up a case gauge for each particular rifle to match a chamber. And this these, this little lathe, uh, you know, like I said, that's all I use it for, but it's kind of nice because it's got variable speed. So it works really good for threading those cases, and it's you know it doesn't take up very much room. Okay, this is one of the examples of our AR rifle. We call them the North Dakota Cayute rifle. Uh, these I designed for maximum accuracy. Uh, we use wood stocks on them. They have uh, a lot more accuracy and stability. We have a stripped down uh, upper. You don't need forward assist and dust covers. Uh, we have the barrel special made for us. We have free float hand guards so nothing touches your barrels. We've got all different uh, calibers, uh, we've got uh, uh, longer rifle length forearms, different colored wood. Um, this one here is a 6.5 Rendell. Most of them are threaded for a, uh, a silencer. Uh, uh, we do a lot of that threading now. Uh, 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 everybody, if they don't have a silencer, they're thinking about getting it. This is one of the 308 ones that we, uh, we put together. Uh, we, uh, we offer Magpul type stocks also. Uh, this one here happens to be a, a Krieger that we made in a, <clears throat> put together in a 308. We make these also in 6.5 Grendels uh, and uh, 6.5 Creedmoors for <clears throat> this one. Uh, another threading application we do a lot of is <clears throat> these uh, uh, muzzle brakes. Uh, most of your uh, big heavy magnums will recoil too much, so we've designed this one here. It's a no jump type brake. <clears throat> we thread the end of the barrel and put it on so that the ports come up only on the top side of the barrel and uh, they're ported seven degrees forward, so your blast goes up and away. Uh, you can actually watch your bullet hit uh, with this one. It eliminates most of the recoil, so it's it's about like shooting a, a 243 or 2506. So when you're shooting a 30 caliber Magnum, this is what it looks like when we first start on them. Then we take and machine it down to match the contour of your uh, of your barrel. All right, so here's another area of uh, firearms that you guys work on. I see you got kind of a, a history of U.S. military firearms here from like 1890 or so to about 1940. Um, why don't you tell us, I know you guys redo these here and you fix them up, tell us a little bit about what you do with these guys. Well, the vintage military uh, shooting has been getting very popular, uh, so we do uh, rebuilding of all sorts of different uh, rifles. Uh, we, uh, we rebuild them. Uh, this one here happens to be a Marine Corps style of a sniper rifle uh, of World War II. Uh, the Marines had a special type of a sniper rifle. We also do the Army version, which is the 03A3A4 model. And then we, uh, we rebuild M1s. We, uh, we start out with your basic uh, M1. We put a new barrel on them, uh, new stocks if uh, need to be. Uh, uh, we uh, reparkerize them, rebarrel them, so they're excellent uh, shooters when we get done. This is a 30-40 uh, Crag, that uh, same way we redid uh, new barrel, uh, new parkerizing, uh, uh, new wood. And uh, this one here is a P-17 infield. Uh, uh, this one is... Uh, uh, is one that we've completely uh, redid. New barrel. Uh, this stock happened to have the serial number of the action, so we, we kept this one with it. Uh, and also, this one here was a lend lease rifle. This one went over to Britain 
during the war and they painted uh, four inches of red on the end here so that people will know it's 30 odd six and uh, we completely rebuild these things from the ground up uh, if you want we we have new wood that we do a tongue oil finish on and uh, also the the things are completely tore down uh, new barrels uh, parkerizing and they look just brand new from 1942. Yeah, and I'd like to mention too, a lot of these, a lot of these rifles that you get in here, a lot of these guys end up shooting these in uh, like vintage matches. So they want a, they want a, you know, a, a period correct rifle. And sometimes you get a lot of these old military rifles, and they end up, you know, the bore is just completely shot, and they don't shoot worth a dang. And and you know, it's it's kind of disheartening when you shoot them because you're not hitting nothing so uh, being able to put a new original style barrel on one of these things and making them shoot like a brand new rifle uh, is just you know for some of these guys it's a necessity to, to go out and shoot these vintage matches and it just makes shooting them a whole lot funner and then on top of that you got a nice looking nice shooting basically a rebuild of a original military rifle so yeah every one of these is a, is a nice example of of uh, each rifle so yeah this is this is cool stuff I, I enjoy these old military rifles we shoot in the, the we have CMP matches here and so we make sure that uh, everything is correct to uh, uh, CMP rules on uh, on original uh, original rifles yep so it's basically like I said it's basically a brand new vintage rifle <laughs> All right, so here we got a few different things going on. We got uh, a couple full-blown customs, and then we got kind of a, an example of a uh, custom factory rifle that's been reworked, and another custom factory rifle, F-class stock, and a few actions. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about a few of these? Well, basically, we can uh, do whatever you want. Uh, if you've got a shot-out barrel on your favorite hunting rifle, uh, we can take uh, that and put a new barrel on and we go through and blueprint the action and uh, the barrel and everything to make sure everything is perfectly trued up. Uh, we do have actions that are completely trued and squared and uh, top quality stuff like, uh, <coughs> like uh, this stiller action here. We, we do all different types of actions. Uh, we have on hand, we've got Remington's, uh, Montana's, uh, Savage, and whatever. We, <coughs> we have uh, uh, any, uh, any type of barrel that you uh, want. Uh, we have, uh, this is an example of one of our customs that we, we built. Uh, uh, this one here is a dual thumb hole type stock. We do have all the different types of uh, uh, synthetic stocks on hand. This one here happens to be a, an F-class style uh, and in the, uh, in the color that you want. This one here happens to be for uh, a big John Deere fan, uh, but we can build basically uh, anything you want uh, from a <clears throat> standard hunting rifle to a match rifle to a uh, big game rifle, uh, anything, uh, anything you need. Yeah, and I like I like this this rifle. This is kind of my style of rifle. I like I like the thumb holes, and I like uh, you know this one's got an adjustable butt pad on it, which is nice. But um, just like the look and the the feel and the <clears throat> everything about this type of rifle, you know they shoot extremely well, and they're just they're fun to fun to build for guys like us, and uh, and they're they're nice rifles. And then this. Um, this is a nice rifle too. It's the wind uh, model 70. I've always kind of wanted a model 70, but someday. And then, yeah, I've had the chance to work with some of these stillers and stuff, and these are extremely nice actions, and they make a extremely nice rifle when finished up. So that's kind of nice. All right, so here's a little shot of uh, in his shop. He's got a bunch of reloading stuff, and Gordy, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, all your reloading stuff? Well, we found the big thing with building custom rifles and the accuracy part of rifles is the proper ammunition to put through it. So we have a lot of reloading tools, uh, the right stuff, and all the 
uh, different full length sizing dies and neck dies and bench rest set dies, uh, all the bullets and everything. Uh, and a lot of people don't know how to reload properly, so what we do, we, we show them how to uh, properly set up their dies, how to properly um, seat the bullet, and how to get the, the correct seating depth so that they get the best accuracy uh, with the rifle. Uh, it's, it's, it's the most important thing is to have good ammunition going through the rifle because unless you've got good ammo going through it, you're not going to see much advantage of going to a custom rifle. So yeah, it's nice to have a little bit of guidance, especially for some uh, <clears throat> newcomers to that, you know, not, may not necessarily have all the knowledge that you may have for doing this for, you know, several decades. And it's nice to be able to get a little bit of guidance and do some of this stuff right and kind of cut out a lot of the mistakes and not have to worry about, you know, learning by mistake. So <clears throat> nice thing to have available. All right, so that's kind of a quick overview, not really quick, but it's an overview of uh, Gordy's shop here at Northern Rifle Accurizing in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Uh, as you can see, they do quite a bit of things, uh, just about everything. And, and a few things we didn't mention is you do park rising and hot bluing, and uh, pretty much everything you would need done on a gun you could have done here. And they do a lot of barrel threading and stuff like that. I know that's pretty popular for you. So if uh, people would like to get a hold of you, to maybe have some of this stuff done, uh, what would be the best way for them to get a hold of you? Well, the easiest way probably is go to our website, uh, northernrifleaccurizing.com. Uh, it's got all the usual information on it, and uh, you can uh, probably the best way it would be to email me because a lot of times we'll be working on the machinery, and that we can't stop every once in a while just to be uh, on the phone uh, so then uh, just an email would probably be the best and uh, we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Sure and then I'll, I'll put all that information down below uh, in the description and some links to his uh, website. I appreciate you allowing me to come here today and checking out your shop and uh, and one thing I'd like to mention too that like running a gunsmith shop like this a lot of things that you don't see especially when you come through the door is like all the specialized tooling and reamers and cutters and and all that specialized stuff that uh, you know is usually tucked away in shelves and drawers and stuff and you don't really see it in here so that's that's kind of something we didn't go over today but we just kind of covered the main topics but um, so yeah like I said I appreciate you letting me come here today and, yeah well thank you and, uh, like I said if you guys got any questions for Gordy shoot him an email and uh, if you got any questions for me let me know I'm always available to answer questions so until next time, stay safe on your machines and shoot safe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.